Hello and welcome to a new episode of Pat's Chat. Today I'm with an awesome person from Singapore, Lila White, a tea host, mother, entrepreneur, and someone very knowledgeable in health, fitness, and wellness. Uh, welcome, uh, Lila, and thank you so much for your time today. No, thank you for having me. Uh, you are very brave to have me on your show because you don't know what's going to come out from my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm looking forward to that. Um, really interesting personality when I did uh, my research. Uh, basically, I didn't know uh, where to really start. So I do it as usual. I start with you as a, as a person with your past. And uh, I could see that you're Childhood was not a, an easy one. Um, you grew up with uh, eight siblings, uh, so total nine nine kids together in in Singapore, a little bit in the suburbs, um, in very modest um, environment. I read, uh, but also what um, uh, what I read that uh, you were raped at thirteen. Um, you mentioned that there were sev several persons uh, involved. That was really uh, shocking to read that. And uh, mm -hmm. of course, um, uh, for me, it was uh, interesting to understand how, how did you manage to overcome this uh, horrible experience? I mean, how, how do you manage that at, uh, at such a young age? Um, I was molested at the very young age of four years old, and it continued, I think, oh. about till, yeah, till probably, I can't remember, 10, 8, 10 years old, by um, shopkeepers, by uh, name, family friends, by relatives, uh, not close relatives, not immediate family, but close relatives. Uh, but I was raped by a guy that I know when I was 13 years old, uh, one guy. Um, I, I think uh, as a child, it was confusing. Um, because during my age, I'm 53, so I was like four years old. How many years ago was that, right? 49 years ago. Um, at that time, we were not taught about our body and sexuality and all that. So it was very confusing because your body tends to react differently being touched. And you know that it's wrong because everything is done underneath, underground. So I don't know my body is telling me to respond a different way because the feeling of touch, of course, as human beings, we are creatures of love and touch. But because it's done on the lowdown, you know that it's wrong. So for me, it was more about the conflicting of feeling that I was wrong to feel that, that you know, the, the feeling of being touched is a good feeling, but it's just wrong. It was confusing for me. Um, but at the age of 13, I think 12 or 13, uh, after the rape, I seemed to understand it a bit more. I understood that it was not um, me. It was the other person. It's not my fault because my body was reacting the normal reaction a body should react or at being touched. So mm -hmm. the shame is no longer on me. The shame is supposed to be on that adult that was doing it to mm -hmm. me. So that's where it released me from all the guilt and feeling of shame. I think it's, it's more feeling of shame than anything else. Um, that's where I found my freedom. That's where I was a very quiet child. Um, that's where I am now, as you know, I'm very talkative and I'm very vocal. Um, but the strength that it gave to me, I broke the story to my family. And I remember we were all sitting, I think, and I was, I was in my probably 18, 19 years old, we were all sitting uh, in the family room and I just talked about it. And I was like, did you know so-and-so, the photographer came and molested me every day. Did you know the shopkeeper? And then my sister starts talking, oh yes, the shopkeeper did this to us too. So it was like an open oh, wow. discussion, right? Mm, yeah. And then, yeah, but I didn't know my family went through the same. I, know, mm. I knew one of my sister went through the same with me because we mm. both were molested at the same time on the same bed with our relative. Wow, okay. In the same That's bed. That's horrible, yeah. yeah. And then she never talked about it. Yeah, it's, it, of course it's horrible. Mm. But as a child, you never understand because our, our human DNA is to find love, to feel love. Mm -hmm. um, but that was like an uh, eye catch, uh, eye opener for us because we can start discussing it as a family. Mm -hmm. And when my parents and my my aunties were saying, "Why didn't you tell us?" I said, "Of course we did. 
we told you guys, but because it was, we were, we were taught to keep quiet. Children are supposed to keep quiet. We're not supposed to, you know, and they live in a society of community um, anyways in the village. So the, the neighbors are important, you know, relatives, I mean, relationships uh, with the neighbors are important. But it, it, it broke so many rules. It broke so many uh, molds that now we talk about things openly. And one of the things that came out of it is I will never put my children through the things that, that I went through. So I was very overprotective. No, my children would never sleep over at other people's house. And my children were always told to lock their doors when they sleep, no matter who it is in the house. So, so that's how I got over it. I mean, mm, I got over it yeah. knowing the fact that it wasn't my fault. Mm, okay. So the guilt for children that are victims, the first thing they feel is feel guilty and shameful. Mm, okay, I understand. That is, um, wow. <laughs> uh, that's a, a tough one to start. I, I, I thought it was, uh, well, an experience that you, that you should share. And I hope really that, um, well, for, for um, uh, the audience listening and some go through this um, situation, right? It uh, can help them also to um, understand it's not their fault, right? It's not mm. them to blame yeah. after all. Um, yeah. So, so your yeah. life uh, continued to be a bit, a, a bit troublesome, a bit difficult. I mean, uh, after that, also you, you um, had two kids. Uh, you became a single mom. Uh, you got divorced, and uh, uh, you mentioned <laughs> that. Uh, well, it's it's not easy, right? To grow up uh, two kids, you have to take care of your income. Um, and you started some jobs here and there. I think you you went before already into, into the wellness uh, areas. You mentioned that your your brother was like for you the motivation to start with that. You start with uh, giving training. Um, <clears throat> I um, at what point like did you understand or you you made the the point for yourself like okay you have to take care now of the family of of the kids of yourself. Um, you want to be the one bringing the money working uh, work hard uh, to to accomplish that instead of like well just find another husband which can take care of of your family i mean what was that even at this at a <laughs> point for you or was it like now just have to do it no i think for me i never wanted to get married i never wanted to have kids um so okay. it's it's the same it's the same with my my ex-husband he never wanted to have kids nor get married get married but we found each other and we got married and we were married for 14 years mm -hmm. and 12 years was great he was a great husband i raised my kids um before that i worked uh when i was younger i i did modeling you know i i did i was a production assistant for a company to do uh, all the uh, national days, national day songs for for Singapore. I loved that job. I was at the back of a truck, you know, looking for location. You know, I don't I don't mind sleeping on the steps of the city hall, looking for um, uh, what do you call it? talents. I loved that job. Modeling, not so much. I never liked modeling, but it made me a lot a lot of money. And I did okay. unit trust. I worked for a bank, you know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and then when I got married. Uh, I decided to raise my two kids. So I was a stay-at-home mother and I look after my kids. I taught my kids to read and write at the age of four years old, three or four years old. And then we sent them to school and then I fell in love with fitness. So I saw my brother who came back from national service and he had a beautiful body like Bruce Lee. So I was like, whoa, you know, how do you do this? So my kids <laughs> were asleep. He goes, I guess, get a pair of dumbbells. And then Tony Braxton was the biggest inspiration for me because she was singing oh, okay. this song. Uh, she was singing this song, um, I Don't Want To, and she would wear this white beater, you know, the white T-shirt with the mm -hmm. arms. And I go like, my God, look at her arms. How do you do that? So uh, that's when my brother stepped in and taught me. So I did that every night when my kids were asleep. And then I, I fell in love with it. So I wanted to learn more. And I studied at the Singapore Sports Council just for interest, basic interest. Then I took, an, after the, the uh, month course or something very basic, I took another course and another course. And then, and then um, I was offered, I was the first one, I was second in class of 88 uh, mm -hmm. people. And there were only two housewives in the, in the group. Yep, the rest were yep. all fitness instructors. But because, because we spent money and we studied every night, right? Mm. Um, we, we know the value of money. And then I was offered to do my first internship at uh, Badot Gym. 
and I learned so much. My inspiration were not the young bodybuilders or whoever. My inspiration were the baby boomers that gets yeah. up at six o'clock in the morning that goes to do Tai Chi. And I was like, my God, this is so great, you know? And I was in my 30s, I think in my, no, 20s, 29, 29, 30s. That, they are my inspiration uh, till today, mm-hmm. uh, which I'm great getting to the age anyway. So, um, so then uh, the marriage fell apart. My, my ex-husband was an incredible gifted guy. He's a, a composer, music composer. He was one of the top composer in Southeast Asia. Uh, two years later, um, after the 12 years, um, he decided to do an album and he just had a biggest fear of failing and he couldn't pursue it. And he went through a very major manic depression and uh, he's also now schizophrenic. So, so at the end of the day, um, of course, you know, I, I do not want to sound like, oh, she got it all together. You know, she seems so intact. I'm sure the first three years was scary for me mm-hmm. because I was earning $15 an hour for three hours and I was working three times a week at that time. And um, I was left with over $200,000 or more of debt um, because he just couldn't function. Um, so now he left, he left uh, back to America and it's not, he just couldn't function. So for me, I'm sure it was so much stress, so much fear. I have to raise two kids and I have a sick uh, individual also, not only in body, but in mind. Uh, but I also have to pay bills. So I worked. I worked uh, as a personal trainer. Um, I worked from 5.30 in the morning till 9 p.m. Uh, I had a, a very good helper and I still have to, besides all the bills that being there, um, I have to pay the helper to look after my kids. So from a mother figure where I read stories and put my kids, you know, be the balancer of, you know, daddy say this, okay, but, you know, maybe this, he's okay, you know, he's just angry, you, sh- you should do this. I became the sole uh, military father in the house. Mm. So I, am a, I turned into a no-nonsense um, parent, a father. Mm-hmm. So I'm more like when I go to school, the teacher calls me and go like, your daughter this and I say, please don't, don't pull me out of my job because every time you pull me out of my job, that cuts away my, my food on the table. Mm-hmm. So I give you permission to discipline my children. So I tell my children, I say, <laughs> I don't take crap. You know, your job is to study. I pay you. It's not like you're going to work in the construction. You just have to open your book and study. I have to go to work and bring food on the table. Mm-hmm. So, so I changed. So, so I, just function, you know. Um, I was so lucky because I found a job, the second job in my life that I f- have a lot of passion till today that I love. I am so blessed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I work, I work all day, all night. And, um, and, and then the responsibility, the way I see it is if one parent is not going to be functioning or cannot function, the other parent has to take up the slack no matter what because the kids are not the ones that ask to be brought up. We are the one who brought them up. It's our responsibility until the cutoff age of 18, 21. That's where you go like you're an adult. Um, I promise my, myself that, not to my kids, um, I promise myself that I will put my children to university and I did that and that's one thing that I'm really, really proud of myself because I'm able to give them better education better life for themselves what they do with the education is up to them but i kept that promise okay that that is awesome another awesome story i would say uh <laughs> so you mentioned your your, your passion about uh, wellness and, and fitness you made that to yeah. to your job um you designed and created uh, or still doing gyms for like um hotels and also private uh areas um, but what, what fascinated you really about, about that? I mean, okay, you saw your brother has a, a body like Bruce Lee, but, but there must be more than, than just this to go back to gym every day, work out, work very hard, uh, which you still do today, right? What, what was really the, the, the things that, that uh, fascinated you about that? I think the, it's like uh, working out, <coughs> um, lifting weights, it's like meditation to me. Uh, I've always been skinny, but I've never been strong. Being skinny is easy to me. Being skinny, you don't eat. You go fasting, you lose weight. But to be 
a tiny tone and strong, that's a daily combination. Uh, I found that through lifting weights. Um, I love I love where uh, the confidence and and not only the way you look, but the way you you portray yourself, the way you walk, um, you know your your posture. Um, you know, like I can go anywhere in the world, walk into a gym, and I feel a hundred percent confident. Uh, because I know I go there 45 minutes, I work out and I leave. I don't waste time in the gym. I don't mingle, you know, I don't chit chat, look at my phone. So that's what I do. So, so for me, um, it gave me, um, it, 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 it's the three entities. It gives me my, my mental wellness where I am, um, because it takes a lot of, uh, what do you call it? Mental strength to decide to go to the gym because you mm-hmm. rather sit down and watch TV yeah. and discipline, right? And then lifting weights, um, it's easy because if you can train your mind and your spirit go like, okay, you can do this, you know, because at the end of it, you will get this fulfillment, whatever your fulfillment or your results that you want, you will get that and it makes you feel good. The body is just a vehicle because you go like, okay, I'm going to do four sets or 15 reps that's easy because those are numbers that you can achieve Mm -hmm. but the mental and the spiritual side is a lot of internal uh, discipline that you have to battle with and it's a battle every day so for me it's become a lifestyle and a routine so it's not so much there there are days that I go like oh my god I'm so exhausted I don't want to do it so I said okay just change sit down put on your shoes and walk out and if you turn around you turn around but most most of the time I don't turn around I just keep going Okay, I see. Fascinating. Um, I, I used just says like your lifestyle. Um, that's a part also. Um, you mentioned also nutrition. Uh, and maybe we can touch on nutrition like, like quickly mm-hmm. um, because like you're 20, 25 years into industry and assume like, well, 25 years ago, or for me, 20 years ago, uh, nutrition meant for, for me or maybe for us. Um, well, your parents told you what is healthy and not. Oh, you have to yeah. eat more veggie and uh, you have to eat less chocolate. That that was basically what nutrition yeah. was about at, at that time. And I think there was a huge development in, in the nutrition. Well, what is it um, for you that you feel that uh, nutrition has become so much more important over, over the time? I, I, I think that it become, it's becoming so complicated it, it's becoming so confusing. Everything is so confusing. One time, once it's um, gluten-free and then keto diet, then zone diet. And, you know, it's just so many diets, right? But I think we are forgetting one element or two elements. One, the physical element. We are doing less, so we are consuming more. So no matter what, I, I have a friend that is into all organic stuff. Like everything is organic. But the amount of calories that she was consuming, she was putting on weight. So it doesn't really matter. At the end of it, it's caloric deficit if you want to lose weight. But what you want to put in your body has to be fresh, fresh foods, uh, fresh vegetables, right? But not many people can afford organic foods because as we know, the sadness part about wellness, we are now turning wellness only for the rich. Only the rich can have wellness. Everywhere you go, you know, but there are simple, simple stuff that you can do uh, if you don't buy organic. You just have to wash it with vinegar and baking soda, your vegetables. So there are many ways. But as long as you don't overconsume, to me, diets, it, it's fats. Uh, what you eat um, has to be equal to what your goal is. Like I don't, I don't have sweet tooth, so it's easy for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I want to eat something today, I'll eat it, but tomorrow I'll balance it off with a better eating pattern. But if I have a photo shoot, then I will go on a strict diet. I will go on only high protein diet and I will drink four liters of water. Normally I drink three liters of water, but I'll up my water. Um, I try my, my sin is savory, like savory uh, foods, like salty salty vinegar salt salt and vinegar chips don't ever put it in my face i'll eat it all uh, so so it depends it's not one one type of diet your body will tell you when there's a reaction when you feel sluggish you know um when you eat something you feel sluggish that means that your body cannot you know like break it down it's not good for you 
eat as clean as possible. Um, eat a variety of foods. Of course, now we say fat is better for you. Um, some, if you have medical conditions, then it might not be good for you. The best is to get a person that you can trust to give you advice on nutrition and not just your personal trainer that doesn't have any background on nutrition. It becomes very dangerous. Uh, I think now we are overlapping every, everybody's job. Uh, yep. Get a professional and, and then when you get a professional, test it out on yourself and see whether it works because not one formula works for everybody. Mm. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, you, you're telling me, okay, if you, it, better to talk to an expert than watching like a YouTube video that tells you this is healthy and this is not healthy. Yeah, because it might be healthy for that person, might not be <clears throat> healthy for you. Mm. Like yeah. for me, I, I come from, um, the, also the other reason why I got into, I fell in love into wellness and I got into wellness is because my family comes from a deck of um, health issues. We have high blood pressure, uh, heart problems, diabetes, everything, you name it, you, have, you, want it, you want it, I have it. So it's like a wild card, right? Well, okay. so, my only saving, so my only saving grace is through exercise. Mm -hmm. um, last year, I, I, uh, last year, 2019, my, my, my life is like, you know, I was filming in Indonesia. I was like on the go and high stress level. Um, my blood pressure went up and, um, you know, and I was eating badly. I was entertaining and I went to the doctor. The doctor was saying, Hey, listen, your, your blood pressure is really high and you know, you got to watch your sugar. That was a wake up call for me. I mean, everybody goes like, but you're so healthy. No, it doesn't mean anything. I have mm -hmm. the DNA. Um, that's when I, it will, I cut off everything and I was, um, my doctor, this is for me, my own decision, not for everybody. Uh, I was uh, prescribed medication and I said, no way, I'm not taking it. All I do is change my diet um, and exercise more uh, frequently and that's it. And now it's stable. That's good. That's good to hear. Um, uh, what, what I'm taking for that is like the, the balance, right? You said balance it out. Yes. Okay, it's not the end of the world if today yes. uh, you commit a sin by eating, well, something unhealthy, but you have to balance it out uh, maybe the yeah. next day. Um, when, when we talk about balance, I uh, would like to talk about your um, mentor, which is called Achieve. It's uh, written yes. with a Q. Uh, we still yes. say Achieve, right? This is uh, yes. all about balance. Um, and I think uh, I read a, a lot about it. But I think you're the best to explain what you really try to achieve with Achieve. Okay. So Achieve is the... Uh, not the end of the journey of my career. I think it, it's come all together. Uh, I have three major companies that I run. One is Elite Fit. Elite Fit um, is a personal training company. We create and design gyms for hotels and homes. And I also have a kids indoor playground, the first in, that's built inside mm -hmm. the library. Uh, yeah. It's to promote uh, learn through play. Um, and we also have modules that we are launching. We're supposed to be 2000. 20 but unfortunately 2020 does not exist so we're going to do 2021 <laughs> it's called b uh, we have a 12 uh, 12 month module which is uh, every month we'll teach kids to be be a leader be kind be empathetic so that's our module um, the the playground is not just to let kids play but it's to teach kids to play together to be role models towards each other um, to have empathy to have to have uh, the human side of being a human yeah, um, yeah. we teach kids values uh, the okay. third comp uh, second company oh, i can have I, can is i quickly interrupt yeah just when we when sure. you talked about play playtopia we'll come back to the third yes. one later yeah. uh, how, how did you yes. come up with that idea because that is like something very different i would say from your other ventures which are uh, all around the wellness and fitness right but but uh, a lot of people have asked me that question uh, but it's not true because kids play when you play you're exercising um, so that comes into wellness um, but mm -hmm. when we teach kids how to play it comes into mindfulness it comes to spirituality when they play together and take care of each other's community so that's that's why i ventured into mm -hmm. okay. uh, because i i used to train kids i used to my my youngest uh, uh kids that i used to train were seven years old which i am totally against unless they are sports into sports I think kids should just go and play yeah, uh, yeah. to to have regimen, you know, uh, just uh, exercise and treadmill. I personally, it, it makes me a lot of money, but 
I personally don't think that it's necessary for kids. Mm, okay, which I stop. understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Understand. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, okay. Let's go back. The third venture. No, sorry. This the second one is community outreach. So I I have it's oh. under Lila White Private Limited. So mm -hmm. what I do is I supply trainers and I work very closely with our Tampines Hub. We work hand in hand. So we have we provide provide classes, free classes for the community. So my classes starts from seven till nine. 80% of the classes belongs to me. Tai Chi, Chi Kong, um, Zumba, Pilates, anybody can join uh, for free at mm -hmm. any time. But now we're limited oh. to 60 because of COVID. Of course, the third yeah. company is, uh, yeah, the third company is called Achieve. Mm -hmm. So Achieve is finding balance of mind, body, spirit. So all my life, I have been doing on the surface, which is fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle. The underlying message is finding the balance between mind, body, and spirit, which now equals to wellness. Um, so I've, I've thought about this for the last 10 years, and finally it came together, and that's where I developed Achieve. So QI is equals to Chi, C-H-I. QI is also Chi, means balance in Chinese. So that's why um, I developed uh, Achieve, and we have three IPs. One is a TV, um, a TV show called Life by Lila. Even though the TV show is named after me, but it's not about me. It's about me finding the meaning of life, uh, finding what, what brings balance in Asia. What does mm -hmm. Asia define balance? It's about forgotten traditions, uh, customs, rituals. And I learned, um, when we pitched the story, my team wanted me to go and teach. And that's not what I'm about. I'm here to learn. So everywhere I travel in Indonesia, I learned so much. And in Indonesia, the, old, the first underlying message that I learned is how they care about their community. There's a really strong community feel about everything that they do. And, you know, as, as much as um, we like to say, you know, traffic jam and all that, people are more relaxed and take it easy because, you know, you, you're stuck in traffic. What are you going to do? You know, just enjoy it and, yeah. and do, I mean, you know, so that's what I learned. I learned um, the simplicity of life, uh, to look at things um, in a different way, to understand why you do things. That's what I learned. And then the second IP is an app that we're developing. It's called Achieve Life. And the third is an awards and also an expo that brings the mind, body, spirit together. Wow, many things, <laughs> yeah. So many uh, yeah. sub sub uh, uh, enterprises under this uh, venture. Um, well, what is the next big thing we can expect? Is it uh, well the the festival? I assume you have to um, mm. uh, like let go for the moment, maybe a little bit later, but. Yes. The, the next big thing that you're currently planning? So the, the two things that I think we, we have to stop, um, we're waiting for the borders to open up. I am planning season two again, uh, hopefully again in Indonesia, and the third season will be in Philippines or Malaysia. Uh, okay. Of course, the development of the app, uh, development of the app. And also now we are launching with another business venture, uh, FFF, uh, the French Football Federation Academy. We are opening in uh, our Tampines hub uh, under SIP Road Sports. So I'm the CEO of the company. So that's another f football for, for kids. <laughs> so that's, that's, you know. <laughs> Relentless, right? Relentless. Um, you, yeah. you have one credo that, which I like is the get up, dress up, show up. Um, yes. I think you show up at many places. It's uh, it's really Im I impressive, really an inspiration. And uh, um, mm. well, what inspired me really is like well, I I uh, came across your your profile and on LinkedIn. I think because one of our friends, like I had a joint friend, I think, and I saw you and and you put up this uh, workout videos, you know. And um, interesting with that was really like first I was like. Why would someone put a workout video on LinkedIn, right? Um, unless, um, uh, until I understand, well, this is your business and of course it has a place to share. But what um, intrigued me a little bit more was like the comments that the video had, you know. Um, so there were right. many, many comments, um, mainly male comments that criticize you for what you're doing or how you mm -hmm. did what you did, right? Uh, and, and 
I mean, you right. replied to that in a very straight manner, but is this like something that you feel like often because like you're a lady, you, you should not, I mean, what, what was even the point? Uh, because you're a lady, you cannot do fitness or wellness or you cannot work out in, in the gym. Uh, how, you, how you handle these situations? Um, one thing that I have never, um, you know, in any industry, every, every industry we have to understand is male dominated from the beginning, uh, especially in fitness. Um, I have been told straight in my face, if I look like you, I will get all the jobs. And I say, yeah, you know, if I'm a model, that's great. You know, then I, I get <laughs> paid for the way I look. But at the end of the day, no matter how great you look, and if you have to design a gym, the gym that you design have to speak for itself. It's not your look. You're not going to be standing at the door and people are going to use your face as a machine. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're going to use the machine. So these are all comments. And, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me at all because at the end of the day, I'm the one who always produce. Uh, most people give excuses and they, they never produce on time. Uh, my, my mantra is, you know, get up, show up, and, and get up, dress up, and show up. That's my mantra in everything that I do. But the comments, um, I must say, probably it comes from a good place. I've never seen comments, uh, all those comments that I got. Um, I didn't get any from any female personal trainer. I get from a lot of male that are not professionals who gives comments. And they don't see only, it's, it's fine if it comes from a good place from their expect, from their perception. But for me, it's like, you don't know my background. You do not know my goal. You never even ask what injuries do I have that I have to do that small range of motion. You just assume. So you know what, what we say about assume. You make an ass out of you and me. And that's the way I see it, right? So I have the same male bodybuilder trainer that do the same exercise, the same range of motion. And when he puts up videos, nobody dares to comment because he's a man. But mm -hmm. I'm not this dainty woman that you need to save and give advice. Don't worry, I've had 26 years and I have never had injuries at all. And I'm 53 years old. So what I was trying to show is that I have a goal, mm -hmm. which is a photo shoot and I can do heavy weights and I'm going to follow as time passes by, my progression goes out, up and then my, my range of motion is going to go further and further. That's called progression. If you go through courses and you are a personal trainer or you are a trainer, you will understand this, but you're not. So let's keep your opinion to yourself. And if I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. So that's the way I see it. It's very simple. Mm. Um, you know, so after that, I go like, I don't can't be bothered. You, you want to give advice, give somebody when they ask. But don't give advice freely and think that you are the shit. So that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Very good point. Thank you so much, uh, Lila. Uh, time passes very, very fast. Um, let me ask you one final question because you mentioned you're 53. So it's public. I did not ask you. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, but like, what is your answer to people like or to younger people, younger kids that say like, wow, at 53, I want to look like you. What do I have to do? I say... Be, look better than me because um, you have more tools than, than I did when I was growing up. Um, I think um, the, I mean, you know, age, everybody say age is but a number and I, maybe it's true, but I never thought of age. I think like when I say I'm 53 or it's trying to tell people that that is age, ageless, right? 53 is a number, but I do it because I do it because I have put my mind that I don't want to be sick. I like myself. I embrace my age, but I do, to look your age. What does that mean? You know, you have to define what the look of your age is. Uh, I get insulted when people go like, "But you don't look like your age," and I say, "What does that mean? I don't understand that." Twenties don't look look older than than I do. So what does that mean? You know, so we have to redefine what your age looks like. Um, what you feel like is it's incredible i don't feel 53 yeah. <laughs> you know i feel i feel the way i feel every day so that's it <laughs> so if they want to look like me i hope they look better than me and um, they have a lot of possibilities and there's so many options to to better yourself uh, i'm at the verge I'm, i've been in this industry for 26 years and you know i wish i had more time but um you do what we ha what we have and time is is not your friend. It's not your friend unless you know you you have bigger things and um, 
uh, to accomplish. And then you just have to go forward with it. Awesome. Thank you very much for these uh, final words. Uh, as I said, very inspirational. I really love the stories. Um, <laughs> that, was, that was a difficult to start with, but I'm, I'm really happy you uh, found the time and uh, you were talking uh, with me today. Uh, thank you very much, Lila, for, for this. Patrick, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me. And I know I, I talk a lot, but hopefully <laughs> this will never be the last time <laughs> and you can edit. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe second episode, yeah. Uh, thank you very much uh, to the audience for watching thank this you. episode. I hope you liked it as much as I did. And then I see you next week for another episode of Pat's Chat. Thanks and have a great day.